Last week we talked about this being the beginning of sorrows, this time when the Bible says that the nature is groaning, the earth groans for the revealing of the sons of Yah. And we talked about it's a time of a noise and a shaking because he's restoring his people, he's waking his people up. And we talked about that this is a time of promise that the blindness of his people would be removed. We talked about those three things. And it's my hope that we begin to wake up out of our slumber. It's my hope that we begin to wake up out of our blindness. Amen. And uh, we looked at Romans chapter 11 last week where Paul speaks to this. And, um, you know, three things that he mentioned was that this blindness happened in part to Israel. In other words, there's a remnant that didn't go blind. It said it happened in part. The second thing he noted was that this blindness gave the Gentiles an opportunity to come in. And the last thing he noted was that all Israel would be saved. Right? We saw that last week. And I'm not going to review anything from last week. But today I, I, I do want to focus on the blindness and the slumber. <laughs> because a lot of us don't feel like we're in blindness. A lot of us don't feel like we've been in slumber. We feel awakened uh, because we're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't feel like we're blind. And we don't feel like we're in the slumber. But may Yah's word be true in every man a lie. Because there's some things that we don't know about. Things that we never saw before. And things that we just sleeping on. And the Father is making those things known in this time. That's the season that we're in. And we know that last week that he doesn't change. But that he does work in seasons. And he says we should know what he's doing by the seasons. And he wasn't talking about winter, fall, summer, spring. He was talking about seasons based on the fulfillment of his prophecies. He said, I won't do anything on earth unless I first tell it through my prophets. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what's going on on the earth, then maybe we should take a look at what the prophet said. Is there any scriptures that talk about what we see today? Amen. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. yes here. Yeah, there is. There is. So I won't, I won't linger on that. But just know we need to address blindness and slumber. We need to address it. We need to talk about it. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, verse, we'll start at verse 15. Some of us are familiar with this. It's one of my favorite prayers. From Paul, the Apostle Shaul, Shaul, 
Ephesians chapter 1. I'll start reading in verse 15. It says, For this reason I too, having heard of your belief in the Master Yahuwah and your love for the set-apart ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Master Yahuwah, Messiah, the Father of esteem, would give you a wisdom, I'm sorry, a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you know what is the expectation of his calling and what are the riches of the esteem of his inheritance in the set of partners. And what is the exceeding greatness of power toward us who are believing according to the working of his mighty strength which he wrought in the Messiah when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenlies, far above all rule and authority and power and mastery and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all under his feet and gave him to be the head over all to, be, um, to the assembly, which is his body, the completeness of him, who fills all in all. Amen? Amen? Now that you might think, well, Brother Larry, that kind of reads different than my Bible. I'm reading out of the Scriptures version. It's called the Scriptures version. Mm -hmm. And the Scriptures version, um, it reinserts uh, um, Hebrew names back into the text. Right? So it might be worded a little different, sound a little different. But I'm starting to read that because I want to enlighten my understanding. I want to know more. I want to understand more. I want to understand better. Amen. So what do we see here? Uh, if we look at verse 18, his prayer is that our eyes, right, that your eyes of understanding would be enlightened. Eyes of your understanding. So he's addressing what you're able to see, right? Now, who is he writing to? If we go back to verse 1, He's writing to the saints. So he's not talking about the eyes of non-believers. He's talking about the eyes of those who believe. I think all of us here today believe, or we would call ourselves believers. Mm -hmm. So if he's writing and saying, I pray that your eyes be enlightened, you understand? That, that means that we're not seeing everything that we're supposed to see. Yeah. If he's got to write and pray to make this happen, then we've fallen short on what we're supposed to see. Amen. Amen. So even before we begin talking about this topic, I think we have to understand and acknowledge that we're not seeing what we need to see. That the Father's word is true when he said that I will put blindness on them and cause them to stumble and to slumber. That his word is true. He didn't, he didn't lie. He did not lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot lie. So if he said that he put a blindness on us, then that's what he did. Yeah. Now Paul, is, he's praying that the blindness, right, that the eyes of our, our understanding would be enlightened. Mm -hmm. Enlightened. What else is he saying? Right? What else is he saying? Well, he's, he's showing us there's some results. So if our eyes are enlightened, we should expect these results. And we see this also in verse 18. He said that we would know what is the expectation of his calling? Yeah. And when, when we look, look at our past, a lot of our expectation when you look at church circles is not to go to hell. Yeah. It's all about whether or not you go to heaven or hell. Isn't that what the, the whole premise of having an altar call and people getting saved and doing evangelism is because you don't want people to go to hell. But what, what is he talking about? He said that we would know what is the expectation of his calling. What is he expecting with this calling? What is he expecting? Do you think perhaps that salvation means more to him than you just not going to hell? Do you think that there might be more that we need to be looking at? That maybe he's expecting more for us? Or maybe he's expecting more from us? You think that might be it? Well, that's one result. He said, uh, you don't know. You don't know what he's expecting. So I got to pray 
that your eyes be enlightened so you even know what to expect from his calling. He's called each and every one of us. We need to know why. What do you expect? You called me. I came down to the altar. I gave my life to you. I'm living for you. What do you expect from me now? Right? That's one result we should look for. What's the other result? It says, what are the riches of the esteem of his inheritance in the set of parables? In other words, he wants us to know the richness of our inheritance. It's right there in black and white. Right there in the scriptures. Right there in verse 18. What are the riches of the esteem of his inheritance in the set of part ones? Now, I don't know about you. I consider myself a set apart one. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. And the, that word holy means to be set apart, to be sanctified, put aside for a special purpose. He called, he called us as a nation. He said, you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That means we're a set apart people or we're supposed to be a set apart people. As a set-apart people, he's given an inheritance. And when we focus on, well, I just don't want to go to hell, we're not considering what is this inheritance. So we have a calling and an expectation, and we have an inheritance. And because of blindness, we don't think about it. We don't think about it. We don't pursue it. We don't ask about it. And we don't study about it. Yes. And this is just part of the blindness. We've been so focused on, I don't want to go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's been our whole focus, our whole energy. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. But there's a whole lot more. Yes. A whole lot more. Now I'm going to give you an example of blind behavior. Blind behavior. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought of some other examples that might have been kind of funny. Not, I left them alone. <laughs> Just imagine with me. I, I want you to think about your favorite movie that has a, you know, maybe a complicated plot. You ever watch a movie, you spend a couple hours, and then at the end of it, you kind of like, man, I need to watch that again. Cause, and then you watch it again, and you see things that you didn't notice the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, one movie I still don't get. There was a movie where these people were having dreams and then their dream, they would go into a dream. And then they, they were going to these different levels of dreams. Y'all know what I'm talking about? What? I can't remember the name of that movie. Okay. What was it called? Inception. Inception, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was so confused by the end of that movie. I didn't know if he was in reality, if he was in his first dream, his third dream. I didn't know where the man was. So just imagine your, your favorite movie. And it's got a complicated plot. Now imagine that the movie was filmed in France, a foreign country. There's things that we don't know about. I've been to France. And you might not recognize the toilet in the bathroom. Because there's two things in there and you don't know which one is actually the toilet. Because we don't have that here. What do they call the other one? The Boudet or Boudot or whatever it's called? Boudet. Boudet. Right? So imagine that your movie is filmed in a foreign country like France. Now also imagine that when you go to the movie, all the actors are speaking in French. Right? Now the movie starts at 1 o'clock and it ends at 3. It's a two-hour movie. And you get there at 2.25. <laughs> now, do you think you're going to fully understand that movie by the time the movie's done? No. No, you're not going to understand the movie. But that's what we do to the word of Yah, the word of God. We do the exact same thing. When we finally open up our Bible to read, we, we go to the, toward the back of the book. Skip over it. all the foundational knowledge. We just skip right past all that. Skip it all and then pretend like we understand it. Now, some of us are honest. I was talking to one of the kids. She said, yeah, you know, Larry, I, I tried to read the Bible, but I, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. I said, me either. 
I don't get it. You know, I got to study. You know, and I have to ask him to help me. And so we look at this Bible. It's so full of information and prophecy and history and, and spiritual things. But yet we go to the back of the book yeah. <laughs> and then just get a few little scriptures and act like we know what we're talking about. We hold conferences oh. on topics. Write books. Write books, <laughs> videos, movies. That's blindness. That, that's an example of blind behavior. Ooh, that's blind behavior. Mm. You're not going to pay $14 and go to the movie 35 minutes before it ends. Who does that? Now, I've been to the movie late before, but not that late. <laughs> Nobody does that. But why do we do that to Yah? Yeah. We, we, we get comfortable in our blindness. Well, I don't need to know how to say your name. When we start, we start using his name, people start acting funny. Yes, Lord. Well, you're taken away from Jesus. And that's not even his name. It's not even close to his name. And I won't go into that. We did a whole study on it. But let somebody start removing their blindness. Mm -hmm. Let somebody start making some changes. And what do we do? Now it's open game. It's target practice. <laughs> it's target practice. Right? These are behaviors of the blind. And we sit here today feeling like we're enlightened. I got the Holy Spirit inside me, teaching me all things. That's what we said, but we didn't even know what his name was five minutes ago. We just learning what his name is. The one that we say we serve, we're going to spend the eternity with, that save us, and we don't even know his name. Come on, we're blind. We're blind to some things. We're blind to some things. When we open the Bible and we read the New Testament, we don't even realize that most of what we're reading is quoting the Old Testament. Don't even realize. We feel like we're reading brand new Revelation. Ooh, look, brother, you got to read the New Testament. The Old Testament, we don't need nothing out of the Old Testament. And here it is, the New Testament it is quotes from the Old Testament. And here it is that when we think we get Revelation and prophecy, it's summarizing what was already spoken in the Old Testament. That's blindness. We're blind to the foundations of our faith. But we don't have to stay that way. You know, if we want our blindness to remove, be removed. It, here are three things. Here are, now I'm trying not to be long. I want us to walk away with at least something today. At least something. Walk away with something today. Don't just sit here. You invested your time, walk away with some things. Take some notes. Try to get it in the back of your memory. Here's three things I think we need to know about blindness. There's more. Three things. One, who does the Bible say was blinded? Who does the Bible say was blinded? Who? The, the scriptures were very specific in talking about this blindness. Who? 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 Who, who is Paul talking to? Who is he writing about? Number two. Why? What caused the blindness? Why? Why did he do this? Now, when we read Romans chapter 11, it says very plainly that he, meaning Yah, God, put a spirit of blindness and slumber on him. Why did he do that? Don't he want us to know him? Why did he give us the Holy Spirit and leave us in blindness? Well, brother, he wouldn't do that. What does the Bible say? Don't tell me what you think. What does the Bible say? And number three, why has Yah committed to save all Israel? Because out of all my years of being saved, and out of all my years of, of, of studying, and out of all my years of teaching, I never saw that scripture until five minutes ago. I'm Figuratively, not that long ago, right? I think if we can answer those three questions, that that will start to address the blindness. 
That'll be a good start. So let's look at the first one. Who was blinded? Let's look at Romans chapter 11. We're going to read verse 7 and 8. And again, I'm reading out of the scriptures version. So it might be a little different than what the, uh, the 70 King James scribes wrote. For Mr. King James Stewart. <laughs> that was his name. That was his name. We got family in the house. <laughs> All right, Romans chapter 11, verses 7 and 8. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the chosen did not obtain it, and the rest were hardened. Verse 8. And as it has been written, Yah has given them a spirit of deep sleep, eyes not to see and ears not to hear until this day. So we see here who, right? The question of who. Who was blinded? He didn't, did he say the world was blinded? No. He didn't. He said Israel. Israel was blinded. Verse 8, he even quotes Remember we talk about how the New, verse, New Testament often quotes the Old Testament? He quotes Isaiah 29.10. He's, in verse 8, he starts off saying, As it has been written, that Yah has given them a spirit of sleep. Mm -hmm. So we can see who was blinded and who put them to sleep. Who was blinded? Who put them to sleep? Yep. Yep. Isaiah 29.10. It says, for Yah has poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, prophets, and covered your heads, seers. So we can see who did it and who received the blindness. All right, that's, that's the first step, right? We have to acknowledge this because we never acknowledged this before. I don't know that I've ever sat under teaching where it talked about Blindness for saved people. We quick to call unsaved folk blind. <laughs> Are we? We preach it because we want them to come and get saved. But what about folks who are saved and still blind? What kind of word we got for them? Well, we got a word like this. Right? So we know who it is. It's Israel. Right? Who is Israel? Israel are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And just in case you've heard somebody mention it, the Bible doesn't speak any such thing about a spiritual Israel. That's a whole doctrine that's going on. Oh, we're spiritual Israel. And then and they want to come in and, and have all the blessings because they're spiritual Israel. And everything that he promised to Israel, now I'm taking it because I'm spiritual Israel. All right? We know who Israel is. Descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we'll talk about why that's important. All right, so the next thing is, what caused this blindness and sleep? What caused it? Why did he do this? We know who did it now. We, you know what? Sometimes when we study, we like to blame people. We want to blame the Roman uh, and, and Grecian uh, Europeans for coming and changing our, our, our scriptures and changing our doctrines and adding paganism and doing all the stuff they did. Yeah, they did all that stuff. It's in the history books. We know it. But why did it happen? Because nobody can just come and mess around in the father's business. All right. Nobody. Nobody can just up and say, well, I'm going to mess up and come up in his business and do what I want to do. Mm. Unless he allow it. He is king over all. He Day one and until eternity, he is king. Amen. Nobody does anything without him knowing it. Amen. Right? So we can't look at the Europeans. We can't fuss and get mad at them. Right? There's a reason why he calls blindness to sleep. And if we don't acknowledge that, then we, we, we're hindering ourselves from waking up. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 3. And then there's two reasons. Two major reasons. I'm sure there's a lot of others. Two major reasons why the blindness and the sleep came. One is 
that the ten northern tribes of Israel that they turned their back on them and worshiped idols. Mm -hmm. The New Testament, they're identified as Greek, Hellenized, Hellen. Mm -hmm. so we'll look at Jeremiah chapter 3. We'll read verses 6 through 8. It says, And Yah said to me in the days of Josiah, the sovereign or the king, Have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there committed whoring. Mm -hmm. That's a harsh word, ain't it? Yeah. And after she had done all these things, I said, return to me. This is the father pleading to them. Return to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So now you have to remember that at this particular time, the ten northern tribes, they separated themselves from the southern tribes tribes of Judah. And they refused to go back to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to the temple. And instead, they, they built idols up in the mountains and in the high places. I mean, they, they built altars and they started worshiping other, other gods. And, and, and the father was pleading with them, come back to me, come back to me. And it said, they refused. Verse 8, and I saw for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery. See how he equated this with adultery? Yes. He said, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Mm. <laughs> so we can see here, well, we can see why the blindness happened to the ten northern tribes. They got scattered until this very day they haven't returned to the land. Oh, wow. They got scattered. He gave them a bill of divorce. Yeah. A bill of divorce, he gave it to them. They got cut off. So yeah, you, get, you, you got blinded. You got cut off. All right, well, what about, what about the kingdom of Judah? What about the tribe of Judah and Benjamin and those others who are living in Judea? Well, let's go to Matthew 27. Matthew chapter 27, we're gonna read verse 25. This is the other reason why. Blindness and sleep happen. And this event is taking place when they have Yeshua and Barabbas up front. When they decide who's going to be the scapegoat. Y'all remember that in our teaching? About the atonement. It was that atonement moment when Pilate said, which one do you choose? Which one do you choose? Matthew chapter 27 verse 25. It says, and all the people answering said, his blood be on us and all our children. I'm going to read that again. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that might have bypassed some of us. And all the people answered. See, they were talking back to Pilate. He said, which one? Do y'all want Yeshua or do y'all want Barabbas? And which one do you want? And they pointed at Yeshua and said, his blood be on us yes. and all our children. Yes. Now, those of us who have done a little bit of research in the Bible or through DNA or through history who know your heritage yes. goes back to the Isaac, Abraham, Jacob. Mm -hmm. When they said on us, we're taking his blood on us and all our children, that included you. So he said, Brother Larry, why am I blind? Why were we in this blindness? I got saved. Why do I still have this blindness? Because of that right there. Because our ancestors said, his blood be on us and all our children. So they, they put the rest of Israel in this predicament of blindness. Now Yeshua, he prophesied in Matthew 24 and in Luke 21. He told exactly what would happen. He said, you will be scattered to all the earth, yes. to all the nations of the earth. You will be persecuted. You will be killed. You will be chased down. You will be destroyed. Yes. And what happened? Well, look at our history. Look at your history. Look at your history. Look at where we are today. Look at what's going on today. Look at the statistics of today. I, I heard some, um, some historians talking who don't look like us. 
And um, they, were, they, were, they were talking about the history of our presidents. How out of the first, I think it was the first 12 presidents, mm -hmm. 11 of them owned slaves. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't know that. Yeah. Not only did they own slaves, mm -hmm. they were slave traders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't well known because they were doing it in somebody else's name. Mm -hmm. They didn't have their brother-in-law do it, right? A little distance from him. Mm -hmm. They would send the money and have him do it in his name. And then when they abolished slavery, they really didn't abolish it. They just changed it with the 13th Amendment. And they said, if you're a criminal, you can be a slave. That's still on the books today. That is still on the books today. Why do you think there are so many of our males in prison for, for simple little things like possessing marijuana? Serving years in prison. And how many are serving in prison uh, uh, for false accusations, mm -hmm. trumped up charges. Mm -hmm. It's still slavery. That's what, it is. That's what the 13th Amendment allows. It says if, if we get you in jail, if we get you classified as a criminal, mm -hmm. now you can work for us. And they, they'll work in there. There are major corporations who are making oh, money, yes. millions of dollars, yes. off of our imprisoned black males. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not discounting our black females, they're in there too, Amen. but it's mostly black males. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, there are more black males in prison than there were for all the slaves who were living at the time when slavery was abolished. When was it, 1865? Mm -hmm. There are more black males in prison now than the number of slaves that we had when slavery was abolished. So not only is slavery still existing, you can almost even say that it's grown. And the rich get richer, right? This is our governmental system. So when we talk about, about the, uh, the prophecy of Yeshua, when he stood there and he said that you will go into slavery and that you will go into all the nations of the world, that's what happened. And while that happened, we were in blindness. Our identity was stripped. Our language was stripped. Our culture was stripped. Our way of doing things was stripped and ridiculed. And then somebody else took our writings, changed them a little bit, and then gave them back to us with a different flair on it to keep us in blindness. So yes, this blindness is real. Yeah, do we still love the love you Yeah, we did. We are some of the most praying people in the world. Amen. We are some of the most praising people in the world. Amen. Yes, our hearts yearn for him. It's in our makeup. It's in our DNA. Right. We're a Jacob. We can't help it. He, he put it in us. Yes. And, and we might reach out to the wrong guys. We, we look at our, our Islamic brothers and sisters. That drive that they're, they're reaching for Allah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's, they're not trying to be in a false you know, religion. Yeah. There's something in their DNA that they know that there's a God they got to serve. Yes. That's what's in us. But yet, we're blind. So you say, Brother Larry, what causes blindness? Well, one was idol worship. Two, was when we had a chance, we rejected him. And we said, his blood be on us and all of our descendants. Amen? Amen. That's what the word says. I'm giving you what the word says. Go home, study it, look at it, ponder it. Um, yell at me. Send me a text. You know. <laughs> but just go read it. It's right there. It's always been there. All right, then the last point here. Why did he commit? Why did Yah commit to save all Israel? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard for us to fathom in our minds that all Israel will be saved. That's just something we just, we don't understand what that means. And I don't have the time to explain what that means. The scriptures tell us what that means. But you got to do some reading. You got to do some digging to understand it. Why? Why was he committed? Well, I'm looking at Romans 11 again. 
Verse 26, 27. I'll, I'll be wrapping this up. And so all Israel shall be saved as it has been written. Oh! Mm -hmm. So I thought that was only in Romans 11. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's already been written. <laughs> it's already a done deal. I'm going to read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved as it has been written. The deliverer shall come out of Zion, and he shall turn away wickedness from Jacob. He shall turn away wickedness. Uh, verse 27. And this is my covenant with them. Uh -oh. oh. So not only is it written, but he made a covenant out of this? Yeah, he did. He made a covenant. He said, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. <laughs> Wait a minute, wow, brother, I never saw that before. I never saw it before either. But one day it just kind of popped up off the page. Yeah, and it really didn't make no sense, did it? How oh, everybody would be saved. Why? And when we didn't know who Israel was, like, why they all get to be saved? <laughs> right? Well, it's a promise, it's a covenant. It's something that was already written and determined. Right, so I just want you to step back and consider some things. These are very foundational things that we should, we all should know. All right. Here's number one. I want you to remember this. The Father said, "Only you have I known," and He's talking about Israel. He's talking about Jacob. So if you look at Amos chapter three, verse two, write it down. Think about it. Get it in your memory. Whatever you got to do, pull it up on your phone. Type it out, write it, put it on your refrigerator, print it out on a piece of paper, hang it in your car as an air freshener. Do whatever you got to do. Get Amos chapter 3, verse 2. He said, only have I known all the family. I'm sorry. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Wow. I'm going to read it again. This is the father speaking to the prophet Amos. He says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Whoa. You know, that's just like when your mama said, no, yeah, the other kids can do it, but you do it, I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Yep. The daddy said that? Yep. This is the father talking to us. He says, you only have I known out of all the families of the earth. And there are other scriptures, I can run references on this, where he said, I looked at all the earth and I chose Jacob. Yes. So we're talking about a chosen people. That the, and it's not anything that we did. It's not because of the way we look. It's not because of the way we walk. It's not because of the way we drink. It's not because of the food that we like. It's none of that. It was his choosing. He chose us. He chose Jacob. He said, out of all the families on the earth, I chose you. I chose you. And because I chose you, you act up, I'm going to punish you. Right? And we find out that, that uh, the, uh, the father who disciplines his son is the father who loves his son. And if he don't discipline him, he don't love him. So we know the father loves us. We think about this blindness. Why we will? He loved us. He loved us, right? So I'm, I'm going to hurry up. So I just want you to remember that. He said, only you have I chosen. Amos 3, 2. Take it home. Run references on it. Repeat it in your mind. Know who you are. Know what the Father says about you. He says, out of all the families on earth. He doesn't say that. I don't love nobody else. He didn't say I reject everybody else. He didn't say none of that. He said, I chose you out of all of them. He didn't say I chose you because you was better than all of them. No. Matter of fact, he said y'all stiff neck, yeah. hard head. Yeah. That's what we would say, right? <laughs> y'all hard head. Yeah. But yet he chose us. All right, Isaiah fourteen one. Write it down. It says, "For Yah have mercy on Jacob, and will choose Israel and set them in their land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house." of Jacob. This is prophecy. This hasn't happened yet. He said he will yet choose Israel. 
Now, some people teach, well, now that Yeshua died, he died for the whole world, so it don't matter who you are. Well, yeah, we all have salvation. But there's still a, a one a people that he chose. And he said, and yet I will choose. In other words, he didn't change his mind just because Yeshua paid for our sin. He didn't change his mind about Israel. Psalm chapter uh, 135, verse 4. It says, For Yah have chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. All the covenants, except for the rainbow, were with Israel. All of them. Now the rainbow, everybody, everybody can part you know, participate in that covenant. But all the covenants, all the other ones, they were with Israel. Guess what? There is no covenant with the church. What we call the church? If you find it in the Bible, let me know. But all every covenant that he made besides the rainbow, he made it with Israel. His peculiar treasure. The ones that he chose out of everybody else. All of the writings in the Bible, except for Paul's, were originated in Hebrew. Hebrew. And I know we, we just did a study. I'm wrapping up, y'all. We just did a study on, on the scriptures not too long ago. And I found out since then that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Revelation, Jude, James, and Hebrews were written in Hebrew. They weren't written originally in Greek. Paul's letters were written in Greek, but the rest were written in Hebrew. All the writers of, of the scriptures and all the books of our history were Hebrews. Seed of Jacob. And all of the prophecies in the Bible pertain to Israel. Now, we know that Gentiles get to participate, but the prophecies are about Israel. So, Brother Lane, why, you know, you probably wonder, why do you keep emphasizing this? The knowledge of this has been hidden from us because we've been blind. We've been blinded. And we're living in a time where the Father is lifting this blindness. And the dangerous thing about it is people are rejecting knowledge. Yes. People are rejecting truth. It doesn't fit their tradition. Yeah. It makes them uncomfortable. It makes them have to, to work and study and try to figure out things. It makes us have to change. And we can get into a dangerous place where if we're unwilling to change because we don't want to be uncomfortable, then we grow stagnant and we miss this awakening. We miss it. We miss it. And I want to leave you with, with two final things. One, why did he do this? Why, why is he choosing Israel? We can look at Isaiah 42, verse 6 or 7. It says, I, Yah, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and will give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. He chose Israel to be the light to the Gentiles. He didn't choose Israel just because he wanted a favorite child. He didn't choose us just for his own liking and that's it. There was a purpose that we're chosen. And when we decided we weren't going to abide by his purpose, he shut it all down. Blindness. Stumbling. Slumber. But now he's waking us back up. We have a purpose. Our purpose is to be a light to the world. When Yeshua spoke, he said, you are supposed to be like a, a tree, I mean, a city on the hill. Why light up a light and then put a bushel over it? You're supposed to be the light of the world. But we can't be a light if we're in slumber. We can't be a light if we're in blindness. Because now we're walking around and talking just like everybody else. Sound the same as everybody else. Well, what makes us peculiar if we look the same as everybody else? We do the same things everybody else is doing. We sound the same way that everybody else sounds. What makes you peculiar? Right. Nothing. Listen to the same music everybody else listens to. Watch the same shows. Look at the same videos. 
got the same mannerisms and expressions. It's nothing different about us until we wake up, come up out of our blindness, and start being obedient to what he called us to. At that point, we can be his light to the world. Light to the world. Until then, there's no light. Where else is the light going to come from? What other light is there? Is there another light? Does the Bible talk about another light coming to the world? No, it doesn't. There's one light that he talks about, and that's our purpose. That's our purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 So who was blinded? Israel. Who was asleep? Israel. Who put them to sleep? Who blinded them? The Father. Why, why did he do that? Because we rejected his ways. We rejected Yeshua. Disobedience. But what did he promise to do? He said, I'm going to save all Israel. And we're seeing the beginning of that. We're seeing the beginning of that. We're seeing the beginning. We're seeing men coming up out of prison with a whole different commitment. We're seeing them commit to their families, commit to be strong, commit to, to study the word. We're starting to see it. We're starting to see it. It's happening now. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Amen? Amen. 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 So I don't pour it out enough. <laughs> pour it out enough. Amen.